Along the banks of the St. Lawrence River lies the city of Montreal, with a metro population of 4.3 million people and a GDP of $180 billion, Montreal relies heavily on its transport infrastructure. One of the greatest things about Montreal is transportation, like there's so many options. In Montreal, public transportation is pretty convenient. It is definitely a public transportation centric type of city. They have probably the nicest public transportation system I've ever seen. Let me take a moment to say that riding the metro in Montreal really is pretty cool. Well, this is a really exciting part of Montreal. The metro system, they call it. It runs on rubber tires. Much like the Paris system that is modeled after. This, these are seriously world class. Probably the best in North America. And as someone coming from Boston, I can say with full confidence that the service is a lot better here. First time? Really cool. Really cool? <laughs> yeah, so much better than Toronto. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. The metro stations are places themselves, fantastic piece of architectural engineering. They are so different from anything that I had ever seen before. The Montreal metro system is a masterpiece. This was built by people who really care, and it comes through. It's pretty special. The Montreal metro is fantastic, from the stations to the trains to like the bus connections. I mean, just everything about it is really well planned. Aside from one thing, these lines underserve Montreal's West Island and South Shore areas, which have developed significantly in recent years. Although there is a bright light in the future as this city is going through a big transit expansion in its regional rail network. Montreal is an exciting place for transportation right now. After a long period of stagnation in transit building, Montreal is literally doubling its rapid transit network with an automated metro system similar to the Vancouver Skytrain. On April 22nd, 2016, Michael Sabia, the CEO of CDPQ, a public investment group in Quebec, partnered with Philippe Couillard, the premier of Quebec, unveiled the new project, a $6 billion, 67-kilometer rail line across Montreal called the Réseau Express Métropolitain, or REM. The Réseau Express Métropolitain is an automated light rail project under construction in the Greater Montreal area. The fully automated, all-electric and pilotless system is one of only two similar train networks in North America, the other, the Canada Line in Vancouver. Along the REM, there will be a total of 26 stations. They will have modern designs, characterized by the use of wood, glass, and vegetation. All of the REM stations will be closed and ventilated. They will feature elevators, Wi-Fi, and platform screen doors. The first use of such technology in North America. Some of these stations will be very unique. The Edouard Montpetit station will sit 72 meters underground, making it the deepest station in Canada and one of the deepest in the world. One station will service the Montreal Coudou Airport. Three stations will be connected to Montreal's metro system. With its grand scale, modern stations, comfortable surroundings, and quick commute times, it will serve as a 21st century evolution to Montreal's expansive transport network. It is the largest public transit project undertaken in Quebec since the Montreal Metro in the 1960s. And the largest transit system expansion in Canadian history. Definitely in a, a project that's got great excitement, lots of hype around, lots of yes. positive aspects and advantages that it's going to bring. This increased efficiency will add an estimated $3 billion to the regional economy, and the line's electric trains will help prevent 680,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions over the course of 25 years. Oh, it is bigger. It's bigger than you might think. Running from De Maltin, the west end of the islands and the airport, under the mountain and out across the St. Laurent to Brossard. This is going to be a game changer for the town. At 67 kilometers of 26 stations, it doubles the length of Montreal's rapid transit network. So get ready to say this for the first time in ages. We're number one. Suck it, Toronto. Ah, oh, they don't care. <laughs> the REM is not a light rail line. As usual, North American press can only conceive of exactly three types of public transportation infrastructure, light rail, buses slash BRT, and heavy rail subways. They do not seem to be able to grasp the concept that the REM is a metro, but smaller and using catenaries. Whoa. I know. That's, that's not legal. Fortunately, we have the term light metro, which incorporates mm. the light from light rail so that people don't get confused. It will be fully automated, electrified, and grade separated. Hey! We, yes, good, right? We like those things. Those are actually illegal in the United States. That sure. sounds very, very good. Yes. CDPQ Infra, a subsidiary of Caisse de dépôt et placement du Québec, is managing and carrying out this project. Planned in the space of two years and now under construction, the REM is characterized by its quick and efficient execution. That efficiency has allowed CDPQ Infra to plan follow-up projects in the Greater Montreal area. 
The original REM came from the government requesting the case look into an airport connection and a South Shore connection. The case took it and, well, ran with it would be an understatement. In total, the REM will cost around $7 billion. This funding comes from several sources, including CDPQ, the Quebec government, and the Canada Infrastructure Bank. The REM is being built in kind of a unique way. During the financial crisis, the second largest pension fund in Canada, the CDPQ, or CASE, noticed something nerdy. While most of their investments had tanked with the rest of the market, their infrastructure investments had been rock solid. The pension fund was heavily invested in Vancouver's airport transit line being built for the Winter Olympics. That was a big W, I tell you! We should do that again. But this is where something unusual happened, because its home was Quebec, a province with an appetite for political ventures and unorthodox structures. In a meeting with the government, they learned that there was an interest in getting some long-dreamed-of transit projects done finally. But they didn't just sit around with their bag of money waiting for some engineering firm to come knocking. They set up and staffed up an infrastructure division near the major construction and engineering players in downtown Montreal. A group of people that can manage a project, not just write checks. With the support of the Quebec government, they asked the various municipal and government stakeholders in Montreal what transportation problems they were looking to solve. They found out there was an interest in connecting the South Shore and the airport, as well as reducing the amount of traffic on existing metro lines. They also figured out what opportunities they had. The proposals for the new Champlain Bridge being built had light rail in the project. Could that be used? There were all these highways where people wouldn't mind cheaper above-ground infrastructure being built, and there were rail corridors that were underutilized. They also found out how much the government was paying for the bus and train services that currently solve the same transportation problems. They then put all of that together and came up with a better solution for the government at a better price than they were currently paying. It's kind of like if someone came to your street and asked you and your neighbors, how much are you paying for internet? And then they went away, figured out what it would cost to set up fiber optic and came back to your house and said, okay, we can give you twice the speed for half the price if you and your neighbors all agree. So as an example, in 2018, there was a heavy rail passenger line going to Doe Mountain with an average cost per passenger kilometer to the transit authority of 89 cents. It would run nine trains in the morning and afternoon from open platforms through the Montreal Tunnel to downtown. By retrofitting the existing tunnel and building down highways, they managed to come back to the city with a deal for a 20 hour a day, seven day a week automated line. Instead of nine departures during the rush hour, there are 40. People don't need to carefully plan their day downtown and make sure they get back to the station at a certain time before the last train leaves. They can just wait until bar close and head to an enclosed, now air-conditioned station. The train will show up in minutes. And what's best? Instead of costing the government 89 cents per kilometer to operate, plus construction and new equipment costs, it costs them 72 cents, all included. If ridership ends up being very low, the case are the biggest loser. They're motivated to make the system as good as possible and get as many riders on it as they can. There is no minimum payment. If no one rides for REM, the city pays absolutely nothing. As ridership increases, the price per kilometer the ARTM has to pay decreases. So we won't be punished as a city for growing and increasing our population. In fact, this incentivizes densification and growth. And, and this is the thing which I think people when discussing the REM always forget, if we as citizens ever feel ripped off, the case is a pension fund created and regulated by the Quebec government. The law can be changed and the case can be forced to sell off its assets to the city at a reasonable price. And if the city were to acquire it, even at a price twice that of construction, it would be a great deal. It was an incredibly efficient use of money on a system that will have a very low long run operating cost. So go ahead and screw up Case, really looking forward to getting our hands on that. Of course the Case don't want that to happen, they want to export this model and do it in other markets, which is not going to happen if they're infamous for screwing over their hometown. It's a project that aims to kickstart an industry. Instead of taking old money and making them richer, it's taking old people's money and enriching their society. And you see the thing about the pension fund is that it's, you know, in the interests of the people of Quebec. So regardless of whether they make a profit, they are still serving the interests of the people of Quebec yeah. by building a new rapid transit line. They think that ridership may be high enough that they will just be able to make money off of the line itself. Cool. 
this is another reason why the REM is just like mind boggling to the American transit mind is that <laughs> transit does not make money here. I think this is brilliant. This is just sort of a, a very groundbreaking project. In the initial REM project pitch, instead of needing $6.3 billion, it only needed $2.6 billion from the government, which first of all, draws less heat when there are cost overruns, as there always are in infrastructure projects. Instead of putting things on hold and waiting for the government to approve extra funding, these costs are just eaten by the case, and they have. Costs have gone up to 6.9 billion for the REM, but the case has covered all of them to keep things moving at full speed. Why does the REM have the North American transit industry so excited? There are a number of reasons. The most stunning one, that it just has this incredibly cost-effective construction. Historically, in North America, constructing new metro lines is just prohibitively extremely expensive. See the Second Avenue subway, a billion and a half dollars a mile for this. Los Angeles, we're gonna spend 500 million dollars a mile for this. The REM has changed this. Just over a hundred million dollars per kilometer. A hundred and sixty million dollars per mile for the Yankees. Yes, and that is really, really cheap that what is, you're getting. <laughs> that, I cannot describe how cheap that is for North America. Like Spain, which is the cheapest country in the world to build metro in, 60 million dollars a kilometer. There are light rail lines in the United States that are costing significantly more to build on a per mile basis than the REM. And it's fully grade separated. Wow. Yeah, right? Wow. Congrats, so, they've solved it. <laughs> Basically, how the REM kept costs down is sort of the model of how transit activists have been yelling at people to keep costs down for a long time. Do not dig new tunnels. Instead, use the existing tunnels and then supplement with like some viaducts. Yeah, only dig a tunnel if you just like absolutely have to. And that was sort of the REM's like modus operandi. Portions of the REM route will be ground level, elevated, and underground. It'll be at ground level, primarily along the former De Montagne commuter rail line. The old commuter train infrastructure is being completely modernized. It will also be elevated on the Samuel de Champlain Bridge, as well as on the south shore of Montreal and on the West Island. And finally, it'll be underground in the heart of downtown in the century-old Mont Royal Tunnel. There will also be a new tunnel built to connect the airport to the rest of the network. There you go. That's some really good coverage for just one project. Cool. So they've just got they've just got it together. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Along the REM, there will be a total of 26 stations. All of the REM stations will be closed and ventilated. They will feature elevators, Wi-Fi, and platform screen doors. The train floors are all flush with the platforms to allow easy access for wheelchairs. These will open only when trains arrive, maintaining a climate-controlled environment inside. The stations are going to have platform screen doors, so it's going to create a more secure system. You know, people won't drop things onto the track or people won't fall onto the track. It's going to make it safer. It's going to be more frequent. The trains are, you know, really stunning to see. The REM will use 21st century light rail technology with 212 trains from the Alstom Metropolis family of rolling stock. These carriages will be wide and spacious and have air conditioning and heating systems. In addition, they will be outfitted with special features to ensure full functionality in even the most extreme winter conditions. Oh, those are nice. Yeah, so they're on the Amsterdam Metro now and they are fully walked through. Pretty. One other benefit of Montreal's network, the amount of natural light allowing for great views from the side and the company requested the manufacturer build panoramic windows up front. We asked them to give us a little bit more space to make sure that even a child can have a view. Definitely a new experience in Montreal. Great views of Montreal too. The front window is going to be unencumbered. Riding across the saint mille de champlain Bridge, across the St. Lawrence River, it's going to be phenomenal. Lastly, they will be fully autonomous, quickly and safely transporting commuters across the city without the need for operators. Expo 67 actually had the first automated mass transit system in uh, North America, the uh, Expo Express. It was so early with the automation thing that they actually had a guy posing as a driver so people wouldn't freak out about like being on a train run by no one. What's more, the REM is characterized by its high frequency service. On the central segment, trains will circulate every two and a half minutes during peak hours and every five minutes outside of peak hours. This frequency could ultimately be increased to every 90 seconds at some point in the future, depending on ridership volume. At peak times, it's expected to run every two and a half minutes on the downtown section. Dang! Two and a half minutes? Two and a half. And the line has the ability to run every 90 seconds. This is real stuff. Yeah, right? 
Uh, you can't see it, but Alex is just kind of making this like a gay face. And if this is the peak, imagine what the off peak will be. Uh, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! And it's gonna be a 20 hour a day operation. You will never wait for a train. I feel I like mean, you could just look down and a train would appear. Holy hell! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are so, we gonna have enough operators for this? It's automated. It's automated. Oh, I forgot. There's no operators required. And I mean, sure, to obviously, to like one of the- One of the branches. One of the branches, it goes like, most of the branches, it goes every five or 10 minutes, I think. That's still See, that's, better frequency than anything we've ever seen. That's, that's, that's still very nothing good to complain about. Yeah, like, yeah, you, there's no complaining allowed. <laughs> when, if you live off the rent. Yeah, you can't argue. So, its construction will generate 34,000 jobs and pay $2 billion in wages throughout the Quebec region. Since construction commenced in April 2018, the REM has advanced significantly. REM construction is progressing quickly in the Greater Montreal area, with numerous infrastructures well on their way. The scale of it is, at least in Canada, like it's, uh, it's quite a wide-scale project. You, you can see the progress. Like that's, I think, one of the fun part about the REM is a lot of it is accessible. If you if you drive throughout to Montreal, you're able to see the progress along the line. You, you can start to visualize how it's gonna look when it functions. Like it's not just a rendering at this point. If you look at the South Shore, it's happening. Like it's getting ready. By early 2022, the elevated structures on the West Island and South Shore were finished. And on July 14th, 2022, Alice finished her drive to the airport. As of August 2022, works are finishing up along the South Shore. As for the other parts of the line, work is progressing quickly. Stations are being finished up, track is being installed, and soon testing will begin. The South Shore wing was supposed to open as of December 1st. The construction is all but done but it will be more beneficial to open on April 1st. Quebec's public pension fund wants to run more tests on the line during the cold months, where operating conditions are more difficult. By the end of 2024, the rest of the line is planned to open, except the airport, which will open in 2025. This entire project took eight years. That is incredibly fast. So from anything. like, hey, we should build this thing, let's do an EIS, <laughs> to congratulations, you're catching your 2.5 minute train from downtown Montreal to Dues Mantin, eight years. The entire REM project was proposed in 2016. At its inception, I doubted the project would ever happen. You can only imagine my shock when shovels quickly hit the ground and the project materialized right in front of my eyes at breakneck pace. This is all achieved for around six billion Canadian dollars, an absolutely astounding achievement when much smaller projects in North America often cost more and take more than a decade to complete. Not only will the REM be fast, it will integrate with Montreal's other transport infrastructure. At the central McGill and Edouard Montpetit stations, it will connect to the city's orange, green, and blue metro lines. So moving on now to some of the stations, uh, there's some very unique stations, specifically the ones that pass through the Mont Royal Tunnel. The Gare Centrale is going to be the key central station for the whole network. At Central Station, renovations will preserve and enhance the architecture of the historic structure, which dates back to 1943. The architect decided to keep the structure, the original structure, and just to remember the people where was the track. They put some different kind of ceramic tile, so the track was right here. If there are no train, the door won't open. The section of the train is full, totally full. We'll have some sign here, some light. We'll tell you if it's full or if it's not. So you're gonna use another door who's going to have a green light or a yellow light and say, that part here, you got a space. We are working a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get to it. We have like 70 guys who's working here today. Last winter, we were 120. On the other side, it's almost 80 guys who's working there. McGill station typically ranked either first or second as far as the busiest metro station in yes. Montreal. Connectivity with the Eaton Center and the Rezo, the underground city. So it's going to be located underneath Avenue McGill College. That station is going to be interesting to see how the flow and how people pass through back and forth between the two lines. I'm really excited to see that station. The train will be in the middle. That structure is brand new. Based on what we've seen with everything else, it's going to be grand, bright, really inviting. Wow, they've done a lot here. Of course, from here to the airport in 20 minutes, that's a big deal. 
the North Tunnel over there. There's also going to be a station at Edouard Montpetit. We're about to explore the deepest construction site in Canada, 270 feet below the surface of the Earth. The Edouard Montpetit station will sit 72 meters underground, making it the deepest station in Canada and one of the deepest in the world. The new station is going to be connecting to Montreal's pre-existing STM metro system at Édouard Montpetit, right next to l'Université de Montréal. This site is serious, so I'm getting geared up. And blasting their way down to, to gain access to the, the existing tunnel. It's really something impressive to see that, the connectivity that this station will provide for, to get downtown. You had to sort of loop around the mountain. They're not going to have to do a big detour just to get downtown. They're going to be downtown in minutes compared to almost half an hour. It's definitely going to really change things. And the pictures that we've seen, especially on the REM Facebook page, of how big the construction site is and how deep it's gotten. I mean, they've already hit rock bottom at this point. Dig this, it's limestone. It's pretty hard, hard rock, okay? It's not soft, you cannot dig it. You need to use microblasting, that's the only way. Very impressive how they were able to get there with all the buildings around. You know, the, the construction complexity and the challenge that was involved in all that. It's definitely the biggest challenge, technically speaking, already to have to build this far down. It's going to be at such a depth that we're going to see high-speed elevators that just drop you down there really quick and to pull you back out. When it's finished, there will be five high-speed elevators clearing over 200 feet in under 30 seconds. Those aren't built yet, so today we're descending in a temporary service elevator. Claustrophobia aside, it feels like stepping into a spaceship, strapping in for the grand voyage, taking us deeper and deeper below the streets of Montreal. When the gates finally open, it's like stepping into an alien world. The familiarity of the construction site above is replaced with a massive cavern. And if you look at the rock, I mean, see how smooth it is? Incredible. 30,000 cubic meters of excavated rock and limestone have been removed from the space that we're walking through right now. And that limestone they had to blast through? There it is. A section they'll be leaving on display as a reminder to REM passengers of just how deep this station is. I hope they really play with the depth element. With the exposed rock, those windows into the mountain can be a really nice touch. I'm really looking forward to actually looking at that in person. Time to go even deeper. It's hard to put to video the scale of how massive the tunnels are. Miguel Station, about three kilometers from here, connected also to the Montreal Tunnel. The tunnel will be divided in two by a central wall. If smoke or a problem occurs in one tunnel, people will be invited to go to the other one, to a safe zone. So, no worries for that. Also, obviously, finally, a rail connection to the airport. Now, the renders of the station make it look phenomenal. Visually, it's going to be a stunner. It sort of looks like a whitish crystal rock look on the ceiling. So if they pull that off, I mean, honestly, that's going to look spectacular and it's going to be really impressive to see. It's a world-class station. It's a striking place for someone that arrives in Montreal or departs Montreal even. So if they do what they've shown on the renders, no complaints from me. So this project isn't open yet, right? Mm -hmm. It's so successful already that a expansion has been proposed. <laughs> Already. <laughs> it's successful without anyone it's riding it. It's successful without anyone. It's so successful without anyone riding it. Oh my that, gosh. Uh, the Rem de l'Est, or. The Rem of the Rem, East. It's just, well, if you were English, you would just call it Rem East, probably. A 32 kilometer network consisting of two separate light rail lines connecting downtown Montreal to Montréal Nord and Rivière des Prairies Pointe aux Trembles. 23 new stations, all integrated and connected to other modes of transportation. This rim completes the island, giving rapid transit coverage to long-neglected, low-income neighborhoods in Montreal's northeast. If you combine the two projects, the rim could potentially total 99 kilometers of track. That's a lot of kilometers. That is yeah. a lot of kilometers. <laughs> Guess what? Using an old railway right-of-way. Whoa. And then doing elevated through downtown sections so that, you know, we're not building a new tunnel. I can't believe the expansions before anyone's written them. Well, That's and just... you see, this expansion, the Rem de l'Est, has actually run into a bit of trouble. Guess why it's run into trouble. Don't look at the thing, just guess. NIMBYs. NIMBYs. <laughs> You've heard of it's called NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y. Not in my backyard. The elevated section was going to run down this like six lanes of traffic in either direction. But that would create a scar down the center of this beautiful arterial boulevard. Yeah, that's bullshit. This street sucks. I should know. I live next to it. 
the road was going to be chained, the rem running on one side of it with like a linear ah, park underneath it the whole way. Whoa. But that sounds you nice. see the NIMBYs, of course, have complained. This is just like building a freeway. No, sir. They did not like it. If you can't go over it, many suggest that the case could go under it. But if it was to be tunneled, one of two things will happen. Either the government pays the massive amount of money to tunnel deep into downtown, or the numbers don't work and the case doesn't do the project. With these NIMBY folks, it's like, Jesus Christ, back of napkin, the RAM would cost at least five times more if it was put underground. It just wouldn't get built. In 2021, the viaducts were the first major thing to draw heat. The project recently moved a large section in response to public complaints about it running down a commercial street. They negotiated a deal and moved it to an existing rail corridor that actually takes heavy, long and loud freight trains. Immediately, a new group of NIMBYs sprung up. These are people that bought a house on a freight train line and they're unhappy about the vibrations from this humming electric train. What sucks with NIMBYs, they don't realize that what they're doing is blowing the brains out of of any transit project. This will make my city a much better place to live in for all the other people that live here, not just me. Not in my backyard. People don't want anything near them, especially if it might help somebody else. Block after block, kick after kick, they beat the project to death. They made a whole bunch of fuss over it and now it's probably going to not run into actual downtown Montreal and is instead oh. going to end at the eastern end of the Green Line and force a linear transfer. Uh, I know, but NIMBY's gonna NIMBY. Yep, yeah, there's NIMBYs everywhere, even in heaven. Well, Transit well, heaven. Planners are already looking past this. I did interview Jean-Vincent Lacroix, who was the spokesperson for the REM recently, and he said that they're looking at, beyond this, uh, other expansion yes. options going towards Laval up in the north. They're not totally ready to talk about them yet. It's hard not to be excited about these improvements to Montreal's network. It, it, it's really bringing a breath of fresh air, I would say, in Montreal. The metro itself, it, it's a great system, but the extensions have always been costly to do, and I think starting with something fresh, something new, is uh, really important for Montreal. Like, it's, it's a good choice for Montreal, it's a good fit, I think. Podcast trip is probably going to be when this opens in 2024, is going to be our first major podcast trip. This would be a very good thing to cover, because it's kind of the future of what rapid transportation could and should look like in the United States and Canada and the world, probably. New Zealand or Germany would be better off if they had an entity like the case building out their infrastructure projects. This grand vision to make Montreal a hub, not just for building our own transit, but for building other people's transit is pretty wild. There is something very Quebec about a state-owned enterprise with oddly huge ambitions to change society and the world. Bringing the conception stage vision and the money and the management could make this pension fund, of all things, one of the most, if not the most, formidable transit builders on the continent. After spending a week in Montreal, it's obvious it's a beautiful city where people like to work. Interesting city from the perspective of technology. There's a focus on fixing traffic and congestion. For a city that's 375 years old, Montreal has a bright future. I think uh, you and I and everyone else, especially in Montreal, is eager to get on those trains.